successful ever since. Already our new hospital facility will make a difference in the lives for our patients for decades to come. It's risen five stories above the ground and well, unfortunately, uh, we cannot get together personally. Uh, we're happy to be able to get together on Zoom. Of course, today you'll learn a lot from the presentation. We're fortunate to have with us Shelley Diddy, West Park's Vice President, Campus Development and Support Services, and key members of the architectural and design teams at West Park. I know we're about to be given a very interesting look at the inside of West Park and the outside as well. We appreciate the time that you've taken to, uh, to join us today. I'm delighted first to introduce though, Anne-Marie Malik, who is the president and CEO of West Park Healthcare Center to say a few words. So Anne-Marie, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. And welcome to everyone who has joined us today. We're delighted to have you. And we're very delighted to be able to give you this insider's look at the new West Park. As Joanne mentioned, it's been an exciting time for our community, watching our new hospital literally rise from the ground. It's been one of the bright spots in what has otherwise been an incredibly challenging year as our dedicated physicians, nurses, therapists, and staff have worked incredibly hard on the front lines of the pandemic to keep our patients safe. And while we have all celebrated the visible progress made on our new hospital in the past two years, in fact, our vision and our plan for this ambitious transformation of the campus began more than a decade ago. We knew then that we would need to grow change and innovate to meet the challenges ahead and that there would be a dramatic increase in the demand for specialized rehabilitation and complex continuing care services such as those we provide. We knew that with expanded outpatient facilities we could help more people remain independent and lead full lives in the community and that with the right technology and equipment we could extend our reach through telehealth and virtual care and indeed, we've been doing just that through the pandemic. We also knew that we could optimize the healing effects of nature through design elements that maximize the connection to the outdoors, which is so important for many of our patients who have long stays at the center. Our remarkable hospital and integrated campus of care will meet all of these goals and more. Most importantly, it will enhance the quality of life of our patients and improve the patient and family experience. It will also leave us well equipped to handle any future health crisis, such as the one we're in now, with advanced infection prevention and control features incorporated into the new hospital's building design. I'm excited that we're able to share our progress with you and show you how with our new hospital, we'll bring the very best in rehabilitative care to Ontario. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your interest and support of our patients. We really appreciate your attendance. And now it is my great pleasure to turn the event over to Shelley Diddy and her colleagues on the architectural and design team. Their presentation will begin with what I think you will agree is an inspirational video that shows just how far we've come.
what we are doing today is breaking soil on uh, what is going to be a transformation of West Park Healthcare Center campus. Hello, I'm Shelley Diddy. I'm Vice President of Campus Development and Support Services here at West Park. I hope you're energized by uh, that video as much as we are. We want to thank you for joining us for this insider's look of our new hospital, and we are extremely happy to be able to share it with you today. So as Anne-Marie mentioned, the project has been uh, in the works for a long time, almost 15 years now. And by far, this is the most exciting time in our project. When you see years of work come literally out of the ground and outside my window, I hear the noise. So it is in action. Um, and we could not have done this without an experienced and talented construction and design team behind us. As many of you may know, Ellis Dawn Infrastructure Healthcare won the bid to design, build, finance, and maintain our new hospital. And today we have three speakers from the design build team to provide you an update of the project and the inspiration behind the new build. We're going to start off with Denise Fleming, who's the project manager for Elliston Capital. Denise is responsible for coordinating the design and construction of the new build and will provide an update on where we are in the project. Then we have Canon Design, the architectural firm that designed the inside of the hospital. Principal and Director of Healthcare Interiors, Jocelyn Stroop, will take you through the inspiration behind the interior design of the new hospital. Then lastly, moving from inside out, we have Jason Dobbin, Principal of Montgomery Sizem Architects, the firm that designed the exterior of the building. Jason will take us on a 360 degree look of the exterior and the vision behind it. So just before I pass it on to Denise, um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. We'll be sure to answer them after the presentations. So with that, I think I'll turn it over to Denise. Thanks, Shelley, for the introduction. Uh, I will just, hang on, um, there we go. There we go. 
Um, as the constructor, there are a few highlights about the project I would like to share. The first is the multiple environmental and sustainable standards incorporated into the building and campus design since the project's inception. The project will achieve a minimum of lead silver, including water efficient plumbing fixtures, 15 electric vehicle charging stations in the underground parking area, and maximizing interior daylighting for patient and staff well-being. The Toronto Green Standard is a municipal sustainable endeavor which includes bird-friendly glass and a maximum energy uh, annual energy use for the building. The third environmental standard is a living building challenge which requires uh, us to minimize the type and quantity of chemicals used within the building, providing better indoor air quality during construction and in the long term for the staff and patients. There we go. One interesting construction highlight that developed as a result of COVID-19 last year was the evolution of the hospital's pandemic response. West Park always considered pandemic management in the overall building design, having been informed by the SARS pandemic years ago. As COVID-19 unfolded, the design was adjusted to suit the revised procedures, physical space requirements, and air exchanges necessary to control the spread of the virus. Moving on to the site progress. This is an overview of the four-year construction schedule. At this point, we are one year into the main building's construction, the start of the transformation began last year in January 2020 with excavation that you saw in the video previously, followed by us pouring the concrete structure, which you may see behind me through my window. The bold red line here indicates where we are in relation to West Park taking over the building on February 28th, 2023. We're approximately 25% complete in time. When you look at the West Park web camera, you are looking towards the inpatient unit and it corresponds to this view here on the structural model. So this is the actual uh, drawing from the structural engineer of what you can see on site. So you can see how the structure is coming to life in reality. Once we are nearing concrete construction completion, the exterior brick cladding will start this spring here in the inpatient unit followed by the window installation and then the stone cladding, all components winding around the building perimeter. This second photo shows the site looking towards the west. The outpatient wing is here in the foreground and these are actually the underground parking levels with the inpatient tower rising up in the background. Currently we're on level five in the inpatient area back here. You can also see our three tower cranes. West Park recently held a contest to name them Witchwood, Phoenix, and Thunderbird were the winners. In late 2023, Ellis Dawn will start the final transformation of the site when we demolish the ruddy, the old main building, and the gauge. The West Lawn and the remainder of the campus will be completed, including publicly accessible trails, and we'll plant 363 new trees on the site. An interesting fact, the building will include a 108,000 square foot green roof, seen here in the rendering and also on top of the very top of the building, covering the equivalent of eight Olympic sized swimming pools. By September 2024, the site's journey to a modern state of the art rehabilitation facility in a beautiful newly landscaped park setting will be complete. Thank you and now I will hand it over to Jocelyn. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be able to share with you the um, uh, interior design uh, strategy goals for the project as well as some uh, information about the uh, how the design is unfolding. Um, overall, the project's goals and missions really focused quite a bit on the way that West Park can improve the overall experience for those who are being cared for in this unique community. And these included safety and patient outcomes, things such as that, but also about the experience for those who actually use the building, whether they're a patient, a family member, or someone who is a, a, a care provider. Oh, I'm sorry, my slides aren't advancing. Okay. 
So I'd like to share with you how we sought to achieve the goals that are outlined here, really related and focused primarily on that patient's experience. The location of this building is, is such an incredible opportunity and it aligns so closely with the mission of healing and the benefits that nature can bring to the healing process. So integrating nature into the building and around the building in a very robust and meaningful way was a very important design goal. The team worked really closely to coordinate um, the organization of the plan, um, the movement of people through the building and the design of key spaces in order to uh, capture all of these benefits. And then there's also some key um, program elements of, of West Park that wanted to be expressed very um, significant way and celebrated. The setting is taking advantage of the, the rich natural environment of the Humber River Valley. Um, we took inspiration from this and wanted to really incorporate um, a lot of the natural elements, the unique qualities and the biodiversity that's found here in a way that um, was bringing nature into the interior, interior in a very meaningful um, uh, way and using color in particular to help to energize and to motivate patients in, in the facility. So um, we took a look at color from the perspective of the way that it's found in nature. You see a full spectrum of color in nature and we wanted to capitalize on that and to also take an advantage of what we know about research and our response to color. And so we, we very intentionally sought to use color as a therapeutic tool, if you will, and to make sure that color was chosen specifically in a way that supported the particular patient in their journey to, um, to getting back to their lives. What you see here is a stack of the building and different programs that are located on each of the floors. And here we identified specific color um, that will be utilized on each of those floors, as I mentioned before, to really benefit the um, individual's condition. We also related um, some uh, natural imagery along with that. And so in addition to being used from a therapy standpoint, it's also an important element of the wayfinding program for the building and helping people to understand how to navigate through such a large complex. Um, this plan is showing you a little bit of a combination of the um, exterior plaza up at the top and then the interior um, edge of the building. That, it, that landscape that you'll see in a little while when Jason speaks about the exterior is really an important component of the overall design we wanted to make sure that we related the interior to that very um, specifically. So the entry plaza is designed very much more of a formal um, entry, identifying that main point that you arrive at the building. But once you enter the building itself, we wanted to soften those edges and use a lot more organic forms and, and references to nature. So the terrazzo pattern that you see expressed here is one that flows very much like you might see a river and helps people to understand that the space is welcoming and um, inviting. The color of the terrazzo has a bit of a gradient to it. It starts a little bit darker at the front entry to the building. And as you move to the interior, it becomes lighter, helping to um, create a much more light filled, um, excuse me, light filled and optimistic sense when you move into the interior of the building itself. And then one of the other things that we did was we took um, patterns of leaves and embedded them into the terrazzo pattern itself. These are metal and they're taking advantage of um, the tree species that were found on the site and celebrating those uh, as an important design element. This is an overall view of um, the first floor, just giving you a little bit of a sense of how that flowing pattern is leading people to main public um, important destinations, whether it's an elevator lobby, the cafeteria, and a number of other key points along the uh, the public concourse. A view of the interior as you first enter the building is one that um, shows that um, we have an, a welcoming reception point. It's very prominently located, easy for people to find. And the space itself is one that is um, taking advantage of natural light because of a two-story space with a skylight above. So there'll be a lot of natural light that comes into the space, making it feel very um, welcoming and warm. Another element throughout the public space is the um, incorporation of a number of different seating um, groupings to allow for people to gather and to uh, feel comfortable. And off to the, the left side of this um, view that you can't see here, there is a fireplace that really does present a very nice warm and welcoming element in the lobby itself. 
Immediately to the right upon entry is the feature stair. This extends up two floors and allows um, to encourage movement in the space. And you can see here there's the, where the skylight is located up above, which will really bring a lot of natural light into the space. Off to the right, there is a view of the entry plaza with large windows and then towards the um, walking along this public concourse is another area where you can see large expanses of window that allow to views of uh, the gardens beyond and bringing natural light into the space. Um, this area um, under the stair is also being used as a gathering space um, and allow for uh, groups to um, to have a more casual environment. There is a two-story wood wall that's a major feature in this space, again, bringing um, the element of natural wood into the, the space and helping to um, a lot, add a lot of interest to this environment. One of the de key destinations along the public concourse is the meditation room. This room is designed to be oval in shape, so it's very welcoming to um, people who, who would um, seek out this space for uh, respite. Um, it is uh, designed to be very um, uh, um, multi-faith so that everyone feels welcome. And there are nice windows that look out onto the healing garden, which is accessible um, outside the meditation room. Another key destination is the cafeteria. It's designed to be a, a more feeling like a restaurant with different types of seating, um, decorative lighting, and um, also has large... Um, screens that will allow for various program um, components to be broadcast on those screens and to create a very um, interactive sort of space. Another view of the cafeteria shows the, um, the direct connection that heads out to the West Lawn. And again, the natural light that comes into the space. And then off to the right is a um, more casual seating grouping with another fireplace, just a very warm and cozy kind of place for um, patients and family members to gather. One of the key program components of the building is the rehabilitation pool. And in this space, again, it's, it's, it's uh, designed to be very motivating, optimistic with a lot of natural light so that while you may be indoors, you feel like you're a part of the outdoor space. Um, the Rehab Plus Gym is very similar in that regard, that it's designed to help people be very motivated and to be inspired about how they can um, be on their journey to um, a better uh, life. At the top of the stair is the location for the auditorium. And in this space, it's designed to be used in, in a variety of different settings. It can be used for a lecture or a performance or for other activities that might be needed. The furniture is very flexible. The design of this has multiple screens. Um, and then also um, the idea of that wood ceiling above is allowing us to bring a little more of that warmth of the natural materials into this interior space. Throughout the project itself, there is a very rich graphic uh, program utilizing images of nature in a way that identify key um, destination points and also in spaces where patients spend the most of their time, whether it's in the inpatient unit, um, in the dining room or in their room or using the um, unit itself for, um, for movement. So um, throughout all of this, we've incorporated them into all of the different uh, major uh, destinations. This is an example of one of the inpatient units and what that would look like, taking the large scale graphic at each entry, creating destinations for um, places for information, and then using color paired with that to help people understand where they are and to support them throughout the healing process. And then one last thing I just want to share in this plan, um, there's an inpatient unit here on the top and another one here on the bottom. And we have two um, inpatient dining rooms that you see located in, identified in blue. Between each of those is a terrace that's an outdoor space that allows um, for um, people to be able to go out for a moment of respite or for a social activity. But again, really reinforcing that connection of the interior and the exterior in a very robust way. Thanks very much.
Hi, um, I'm Jason Dobbin. Um, just going to make sure that I'm unmuted here. Yeah, it looks like great. Um, I'm Jason Dobbin from Montgomery Sizem Architects and uh, wanted to uh, thank West Park for inviting me to this presentation. Um, I must say our uh, studio is very excited um, about being a part of this particular project and seeing the vision come to life as construction is now underway. I'm gonna take you uh, from the interior spaces that you just experienced with Jocelyn to the exterior of the building and some of the well-integrated landscape features. The outdoor space integrates the physical, psychological, emotional, and spiritual aspects about healing. The same approach is reflected in the design of the building. The interior spaces feature motivational images, the elements of nature relating to the Humber River Valley region. The building exterior draws from West Park's extensive natural heritage to the communicate the warmth and the welcoming. I'm going to walk through some of the exterior materials uh, used in the new building or on the new building and show some final imagery that uh, when the parts come together, it becomes a whole. The brick on the exterior of the new building relates to the his history of the campus. It's in the existing structures and past buildings. The brick is chosen as a kind of craftsman quality. Uh, when one looks at the brick closely, each brick is subtly unique and has a variation of color and texture. The warm patina of the copper zinc alloy at the main building and entry concourse is distinct identity from the remainder of the building. The material will change over a five year period from a bright brass copper tone to a final dark bronze patina tone with the character rooted in the site itself. The standing seam aluminum provides reflections, vertical shadows, texture throughout the day to enhance the visual animation of the facade. The main entry canopy and the canopies quite frankly throughout the site foster a strong connection to the surrounding natural context through the use of wood-like soffit treatments to promote warmth and calming environments. This imagery illustrates some of our high quality exterior materials inspired by the natural surroundings, creating warmth and welcoming facility. Um, as you can see, this is the exterior uh, sample board that summarizes the rest of the exterior materials. Um, I'll just point out on the bottom left uh, corner is used as a predominant uh, material that defines the building at the grade um, and the pedestrian level. People can have the most direct interaction with the stone and experience its raw tactile qualities and character. The colors on the right represent the spandrel glass uh, the colored glass that is used um, within the elevations of the building to create a visual interest in animation on the facade. Now, when arriving at West Park, you'll experience the generosity of the entry set into a park-like setting as seen here. The entry is comprom uh, com compromised of a two-story podium, a large canopy, clad in that warm patina of that copper zinc alloy, which makes the main entry easily identifiable without the need for signage even. The central plaza is located just in front of the main entrance. It will be the focal point of the campus where patients, staff, public can converge together. The central plaza is seen as an extension of the West Lawn and the entry garden, the space is functional for gatherings, markets, events, and will be used by West, the West Park community and the greater community at large. From the entry plaza, we're gonna move west and go to the West Lawn, 
where the inpatient towers are positioned for the best views of the West Lawn and the Humber River Valley beyond. All the inpatient towers have large windows, views of the West Lawn, which can be, uh, the windows can be open, supporting therapeutic healing of patients who must remain in bed. Each floor of the inpatient wings will be equipped with terraces large enough for therapeutic rehab, family gatherings, or silent reflections. On this image, uh, the terraces are in between the two uh, inpatient towers. Now, this uh, image is a view from one of the inpatient terraces um, looking upon the West Lawn. The primary function of the West Lawn is to provide publicly accessible and appealing parkland setting that offers opportunity for casual use, therapeutic programs, and organized events. It is a dynamic outdoor park comprised of a variety of spaces, um, such as the uh, primary spiritual care garden, ceremonial and event space, sensory activity gardens, recreational therapy. And they're all linked by a network of looping accessible trails. The cafeteria is located on the ground floor with full height glazing that allows transparency and promotes visual connection to the exterior of the patio in the West Lawn. The cafeteria uh, and its exterior space will become the social hub for West Park itself. Um, as you look up at the terraces, you can see that there are that the terraces are staggered to allow sunlight and provide shade and natural protect or shade and protection. The underside of the terraces um, essentially has a wood-like soffit with lighting and warmth. As we continue from the West Lawn, we're going to go to the South and you'll notice um, a continuity of landscape throughout the site, uh, which enhances um, in enjoyment for all and accessible pathways that connect the Central Plaza, the Entry Garden and the West Lawn and continues South and now we arrive oops, at the uh, patient transfer entrance. It's clearly identified with these generous canopies and associated uh, drop-off areas. These are integrated into a natural setting, allowing the ravine uh, to flow up into the site. You can see here on the left, uh, the outpatient towers, and it transitions to an aluminum cladding link above the um, patient, inpatient, well, patient transfer canopies, and then to the right, the outpatient portion of the building. Now we're going to move uh, to the outpatient and move around to the outpatient portion of the building, which has a prominent two-story uh, stone base. And now we're back at the main entry canopy. As you can see, there's a vehicular drop-off area and a central plaza. And lastly, the entry viewed from the central plaza. So now I've completed the 360 view of, of the building itself and uh, discussed the materials. Um, now I'm going to um, basically uh, uh, play a video that ties everything together and please enjoy.
Thank you for your uh, kind attention. And uh, Shelly, Denise, and Jocelyn and I will, will join me uh, for a Q&A session. Thank you very much, Jason, uh, Jocelyn, and Denise. Um, hopefully, we've been able to give everyone a bit of an insider and outsider view, if you like, um, of the new hospital and what we're creating here. Um, certainly, we welcome your questions. I see that there's already some, um, which I'll, I'll read right now. But again, if you'd like to answer or ask us any questions, the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, is available to you, and we'll certainly uh, answer all of them as we go through. Um, Actually, I'm going to start right off uh, with a question about a uh, ventilation system. So I'll maybe start and then uh, hand it over to Denise to see if she would like to add uh, anything to, um, to my answer. So one of the questions is, will patient rooms have individual ventilation systems? So they're not individual per se. However, there are ventilation systems, obviously, uh, through every room in the building. Um, I would say uh, in terms of standards, we are going to achieve the best standards available in terms of our ventilation uh, systems. And certainly, we're all very uh, aware of it more than we have ever been in the past um, in terms of our experience with the pandemic. So, uh, Denise, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that. I think the only one thing I would add is certain departments, uh, for example, the tuberculosis department have additional air quality standards built into the design. Um, but as Shelley said, it's, it's basically meeting all current codes and exceeding certain environmental codes in the design already. Thanks, Denise. Um, there's actually another COVID-related uh, question that I'll read out. So uh, given research done internationally that COVID is very likely spread by micro droplets uh, and given predictions that future airborne pathogens are, are likely, what steps um, have been taken to protect patients and staff by incorporating best practice air filtration, purification technology, and ducting into building design? Uh, and they are thanking uh, you for the presentation. Um, again, I'll, I'll answer high level and, and Denise, if there's anything you want to add. I think we've already talked a little bit about the ventilation, so we believe that uh, we will be able to achieve um, those standards. Um, I think what I would also add, just from a building design, and it's been mentioned previously, you know, we learned from SARS, we're in the middle of a pandemic, we've had the opportunity to look if um, there are any things that we need to introduce or implement, and, you know, in terms of our design, we were very conscious of the future, and albeit a bit of the unknown, um, but we have the flexibility to reconfigure space and equipment uh, dependent on the situation. Um, we have 80% single patient rooms in this facility and that's a really important component and each uh, room, each patient has their own three-piece washroom. So again from an infection control and practice uh, perspective it's, it's very important. Every one of our patient units also has an airborne isolation um, room and certainly uh, technology, and we're all experiencing it today, but also from a care perspective. We're, we've enhanced our technology um, into the future so that we can provide virtual care should the need arise. So Denise, I don't know if there's anything else um, to add to the question. Uh, the, the one thing I would add is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a specific pandemic plan for the building that was uh, developed with West Park and we, we had to sort of revise it as we were going along last year. So from a pandemic standpoint, uh, West Park has determined to minimize the entry points into the building. So you have to be triaged in two points before you come in. Those areas are actually physically separated from the remainder of the building. And the mechanical system in general under pandemic goes into a very specific sequence of operations for the air handling units so that all 10 air handling units go to 100% outdoor air so there's nothing recycled inside the building to prevent and minimize the droplet part, um, particulate that was referenced in the, in the question. And there are certain rooms, once you're triaged within the building that patients would be transferred to and they're very specific routes in the building. So it minimizes the transfer or potential transfer of any um, viral infection to other members of the staff and the patients. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks Denise. Um, so we have a question for Jocelyn. Uh, hi, Jocelyn. I'm curious if there will be a, pa a patient family lounges for each inpatient area, similar to the current building. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, there will be um, patient lounges. And um, in addition, there is a uh, patient dining room. And I think as, uh, as we were talking about with the uh, connection to exterior, every inpatient floor has access to an outdoor terrace. So those can also be used as spaces for, for families and patients to gather. Thank you. Um, next question is, where will the acquired brain injury facility be located? So uh, many may know that we do have an acquired brain injury uh, program uh, here at West Park. And the uh, unit itself, there's an inpatient unit, there's a day uh, program um, space area as well, and they will be on the main floor. And actually, when Jason was highlighting the patient transfer area, it would have been just adjacent um, to that entry area. Yeah. There's a question. Do we have any pictures of the inpatient units? Um, we didn't show too many today. Uh, I think we showed the entry. Jocelyn showed an entry um, mm -hmm. uh, image. Um, we are. We do have some. We're beginning to develop more as we go through the interior design planning, and we've finalized the design itself. So um, we will actually have more in the future, particularly mm -hmm. the patient rooms. I think mm -hmm. uh, many people are interested in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn, I think I've highlighted some of them, but I don't know if there's yeah. other, like, we're not showing them today, unfortunately, but uh, that, that mm -hmm. might be uh, an opportunity for another presentation. Absolutely. Yes, there's a lot to talk about there. Great. Um, got a comment here. Um, looking fabulous. What a spot to rehab, recover, mm -hmm. and get a life back. Uh, so well done to, uh, to the team that's being extended. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question about, are there any escalators? I can answer that. I did pass it to anyone, but uh, we do not have um, escalators in this building. So uh, we have a generous number of elevators. We pointed out the feature stair for those who are able um, to use the stair. And there are a number of other stairwells, um, again, for those who wish to use the, uh, the stairs. Uh, there's a question about what will the patient rooms include? So Jocelyn, I don't know if you'd like to start there. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can do that. Well, the, the, patient, <clears throat> the patient rooms are designed to um, provide a space for the family member to be there um, visiting with them. Um, they do have um, in the room itself, looking at the, uh, the foot of the, the bed towards the, um, uh, that view as you're laying in bed looking, there is a um, a, a design system that includes some uh, wood look panels as well as some graphic imagery and color. So there's something interesting to see, um, television as well. Um, then I think uh, as uh, Shelly mentioned earlier, earlier, every room has a, its own private bathroom equipped with uh, a shower and fully fitted out. Um, large windows with natural ventilation. I think that's another important feature um, I'm going to let Shelly or Denise jump in if there's something I'm, I'm missing. I think you'll see, um, for those who are familiar with the West Park rooms today, um, the rooms, the patient rooms that we're building will be larger, um, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and there's locations for wheelchair storage for those who use wheelchairs and, and, and charging in the room. There's a family zone, again, for the, the seating that, that we mentioned. Um, so I think those are the, the key components. And certainly, uh, from a staff perspective, in the patient room, there's a hand wash sink, again, following infection uh, practice um, control measures. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we've described it. It's obviously, we would love to see a picture of it, but um, mm -hmm. I think those are the kind of the key components of the, uh, of the room. Um, there's a question here, did I miss or what will happen to existing extended care or will you be partnering with them? I think maybe the question is, uh, you know, will we continue to have the long-term care facility, which we will. Uh, we've talked about the buildings that we will uh, demolish, which are the main building, the gauge and the ruddy building, but the long-term care uh, facility will remain in place and, and continue to operate on our, on our campus. Uh, Jason, I'm about to pass this one to you. Um, it says the outdoor elements look wonderful in full bloom. How will this lack of visual be dealt with during the fall, winter, early spring time, which comprises of many months? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, the West Park uh, project team actually had the same question. And uh, what we've done is uh, rendered uh, the building um, in different scenes. Uh, as you can see behind Shelley, 
she has the winter scene of, mm -hmm. of the building. So we've worked closely with the landscape architect um, to choose uh, the landscape, the planting and the planting features to um, um, bloom and create texture within the different seasons itself. Also, we studied the, the, the brick color, uh, the stone and, and the spandrel colors of the glass uh, against each of the seasons too when we, when we vetted these materials. Good question. And I think uh, Jason also pointed out some of the green roofs. Uh, and again, they won't be in full bloom, but there will be plantings, you know, uh, think grasses, you know, there are planting materials that actually do well in the winter, um, a different type of scene and, and with the snow and, and again, you can see the rendering behind me, um, different points of interest um, certainly are, are, um, are considered as we went through the design. Next presentation, I'll definitely include some of these uh, images we developed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jocelyn, I'm interested in the terrazzo metal floors in the entry. Uh, when I walk on the street, the metal street and uh, car tracks and adjacent mm -hmm. pavement can cause slippage. People entering the building for the first time may be looking you know, where they need to go as opposed to looking at the floor. Uh, mm -hmm. Will the metal leaf tiles have the same grip as the terrazzo mm -hmm. floor? That's such an important question because there's been so much attention that we've been paying to the, um, the ability for people to um, move through the space safely and attention to transitions between materials and all of that. So the, um, the, the leaf inlays are, are really just that. They are, um, they're, they're metal and they're laid into the um, terrazzo while it's poured. And then that's all ground to the same level so that they're completely smooth and, and integrated. And there is no um, opportunity for slipping or uh, tripping over anything like that. It's, it's one of the really wonderful things about Trazo as a material is you can really create this very nice seamless floor material with a lot of interest. Thanks, Jocelyn. I might add um, a very, very important component of this entire uh, new hospital mm -hmm. is around accessibility mm -hmm. and accessibility and mobility. Um, and that was a key component in every um, aspect mm -hmm. of design. So whether it's the finishes on a floor, mm -hmm. um, widths of door, you know, doorways, um, access points, elevators, again, mobility. We're trying to facilitate that as much as possible. And so we have actually integrated all of that into, um, into the various features within the building. Uh, the next question is, uh, Jason mentioned that uh, the windows in the patient rooms will open. Can you confirm and expand a bit on the amenity energy consumption discussion you had around this? So Jason and, and Denise may want to weigh into this one. Um. Energy consumption in terms of the, the ability when uh, from an energy perspective, when you start to open windows, you do actually change yeah. some of the, you know, the ventilation and the impact on our energy draw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the system has been designed uh, for those fluctuations uh, itself. Um, so the patients can easily open and close the uh, windows at will. Um, and the, the windows themselves uh, do have um, uh, special films on them to uh, reduce solar heat gain, also glare, uh, while having a high transparency so the patient can see through the window and actually connect to that natural environment. Denise, would you like to add anything? Uh, well, the windows only open four inches for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. And as Jason mentioned, the mechanical system has been designed to allow for the windows to open during certain points of the year. So for example, you can't open the window in the middle of winter when it's minus 30. It, you know, the mechanical system wouldn't be able to handle that. So there's very um, specific conditions where the windows can be opened. And certainly the mechanical design has been uh, worked around that, those parameters. Thank you, Denise and Jason. Um, have we left space for our wonderful current donor wall and uh, a resounding yes. Um, <laughs> we didn't uh, show you the specific wall, but uh, Jocelyn did show us the, the rendering where we had the feature stair and she noted mm -hmm. that, you know, there was some seating in that area directly across from that in the main um, corridor of, of the main floor will be um, the area for the donor wall, the donor wall. 
I've got a comment. Great presentation. Love all the aspects of Nature Incorporated. So thank you for saying that. Um, Here's another question. I used to participate in pool exercise classes and was able to park in a disability parking spot near the entrance. Where would I be able to park in the new building? Uh, I will say this is one of the, the favorite questions that, that come up about parking on uh, our campus. Uh, so there's a, a number of opportunities for parking. First of all, we didn't highlight this specifically, uh, but there are three levels of underground parking, uh, which happen to be right underneath the pool. So there will be direct access up to the main floor where the pool is located. We also have two surface lots, one immediately adjacent to the building and one just to the north of it. And certainly we'll have accessible spots um, designated in uh, each of those parking areas. Um, Jason, how do these lovely green grass roofs get water? <laughs> That's a good question. Denise may answer that one <laughs> too. Yeah. One. Okay, Denise uh, can. Yeah. So because we're a lead, uh, we will be a lead facility, we are allowed to use uh, potable water to establish all of the green roofs. So it gives them a very healthy start. And then the actual plant material that's been chosen, so the actual plants have been designed to survive better in, in uh, low water conditions. So that along with nature's rain will help water the green roofs. Mm -hmm drought tolerant uh, planting and uh, and the roof will change colors throughout the season too as well and give interest as people look down on the roofs through the windows. Great. Uh, next question is, are there any design features specifically for physicians and staff? Uh, maybe I'll jump into this. Um, there are staff facilities. Uh, there's a number of staff facilities. We've also included staff facilities uh, right within the inpatient units because often um, our staff um, are unable to leave the, the units and uh, for their breaks and they do need breaks. Um, they work hard. Um, so we've created those spaces. There also is a, a physician uh, space and um, uh, lounge area and, and an on-call room. So these questions are great. I think we only unfortunately have time for uh, one more. Um, and I'm just gonna answer, uh, raise this one. So will there be standing sitting space for patients to watch and enjoy others using the pool and gym areas for rehab, sports, et cetera? Uh, patients may want to balance the peace and serenity with activity that is more um, energetic. There's a lot there. I can start, Jocelyn, you can... Um, uh, uh, pipe in if you like. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly around the pool area, there is some glazing. Again, it's always the balance between uh, public viewing and private because we are actually doing um, you know, therapy in these areas as well. Um, within the, the gym areas, again, there's a lot of glazing or windows in um, around most of our therapy gyms and, and in the main gym. So mm -hmm. we'll probably be able to accommodate some viewing. Um, again, there are no viewing areas per se. Um, Mm -hmm. um, just respecting again that that balance between privacy for therapeutic use and then yes you know there's a bit of an entertainment value if you like and um, and I, I think also um, it, you know it does energize someone from seeing other people actually um, mm -hmm. be able to participate in these therapies and or some of the recreational opportunities that we will have. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, uh, we're going to end here. Thank you so much for your questions. Mm -hmm. There were many, and unfortunately, we haven't been able to get to uh, the other ones that are here, but we'll certainly find the opportunity to uh, be able to answer them in, in the future, and uh, we'll, we'll do that um, um, shortly. So I think at this point, again, I would just like to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. Um, we have definitely enjoyed giving you this insider's look uh, at the new, new West Park. And I think for our, our panelists uh, who've been working very hard on this, it's, it's very exciting to hear some of your questions and, and hopefully um, get you as excited as we're, we are about um, this new hospital. So right now I'd like to introduce Janet Griffin. Uh, Janet is the vice chair of the West Park Foundation Board of Directors. Janet, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Shelley. What a wonderful and fascinating presentation. It's fascinating uh, to see the progress on this remarkable new hospital and to learn about the many features that will help our patients as they work to get their lives back. On behalf of our board, and the entire foundation team, I'd like to thank Shelley, 
Jason, Denise, and Jocelyn for this very interesting insider's look. We appreciate very much the time that you've given us today. I'd also like to thank all of the participants in today's call. Um, I think when I logged on, there were more than 100. And so it's really wonderful for the people who are working on this project to understand how much interest there is and enthusiasm there is for the development of this hospital. As Joanne mentioned, it's been, um, it's unfortunate that we can't hold our events in person. It's been a, quite a while, too long, since we've been able to meet with you in person. Um, and we miss our friends and community. Hopefully we'll be able to see you all soon. In the meantime, we're holding a number of virtual events like this and others, and hope that you will be able to join us for those. Our next event we're very excited about is February 14th, a wonderful Valentine's dinner hosted online by celebrated Canadian chef, Lynn Crawford. You can learn more about wine, dine and Valentine on our website. That's, that concludes today's Insider Look. Thank you again very much for joining us.